we are in the garden. We're calling it now, we're calling it the pantry pandemic garden. <laughs> um, and it's September 10th. So we're gonna do a little walk around and see what's growing and see where the harvest is at and look at some of the failures and successes. Okay, so this is our squash patch, winter squash patch. And we'd had kind of a big failure here with wireworm. They came in and ate quite a few of the big one gallon starts that I had started. A couple survived and then we replanted. So I had some reserves and we've replanted. Now, as you can see, it's at the end of the season. The plants are starting to die back and get powdery mildew. Um, and so we're just gonna let it look gross and ugly for a little while while the squash uh, continue to ripen. We've got some good ones in here. So you can see um, you know how beautiful they are. And some of them are sizing up. We're not going to get the biggest yield if we had a, um, you know, not had the wireworm issue. Okay, when you are harvesting your squash, you want to cure them for a little bit, and it's important that you wipe them down, make sure there's um, no mold on there. Some people use vinegar to kind of uh, wash them a little bit, wipe them down, and then you want to keep them in a warm but dark place uh, for a few weeks so that the rinds kind of really harden and that the flavor develops and sweetens and uh, yeah and then you'll be eating squash through the winter so this is one of our winter vegetables that we started just a few months ago i guess probably um, the end of june i started the seeds and then transplanted in july and so this is rutabaga and as you can see it's looking really lush lots of beautiful foliage which you could eat um, but we're growing them for the tubers now these um, are amazing root vegetable, um, you know, not a lot of pest pressure at all. But we grew tomatoes outside, and like you maybe saw in the last video, um, we are trialing a few different varieties, some, and some bush tomatoes, as well as a more vining uh, indeterminate tomato as well. And this year we had a really cool and wet summer up until about this point in September where now we're having a late heat wave. Uh, and so which that's really great for the tomatoes. Uh, it was a little bit, you know, touch and go. We weren't sure if we, they were gonna ripen at all on the vine. Um, but yeah, we're getting, now we're starting to see there's gonna be quite a big crop. So this is an awesome variety. The seed actually comes from Rowan White. Um, and she passed some on to Uprising Seeds and it's called Northern Ruby Paste and as you can see as, and what the description says is that it's more um, tomato than plant and it's really true this is you know we've pruned a few of the, um, the leaves off just to try to get more light to the tomato but it's loaded for a small plant it's got tons of food on it. So these are the San Marzano tomatoes and they're not a bush tomato, they're indeterminate. They kind of grow up like a vine. So now they are starting to ripen. As you see, they ripen from the bottom up. And um, on this plant, you can see here, there's quite a bit of blight coming. So it's affecting the leaves. You don't want to put those leaves in your compost. You want to um, get rid of them, put them in the trash. Um, and so what I've done here over the past few months is I've been pruning lots. These plants were luscious, green, leafy plants um, up until a few weeks ago. And I've been stripping the leaves off. You can see where I've just been pruning. You want to um, pick out the middle um, little shoots, the little vines that want to keep growing out. And all of these, I'm just basically trying to force ripening um, on these plants. And so it seems to be working. It's a race against the time right now, but over the next couple of weeks, um, we're supposed to have drier weather. So um, I think we're gonna get a big crop. Now, something to know about green tomatoes is if you pick them and bring them into your home, they will ripen. So you don't need to worry if you don't have, you know, that hot weather and there's either frost coming or lots of rain and your plants are looking really sad but you have lots of green tomatoes you can either pull them by the roots wash those roots off hang it upside down 
um, and they will ripen. We've eat, been eating fresh tomatoes at Christmas time. It's possible for sure. Um, and the other thing to know about green tomatoes is you can eat them. So maybe not fresh, you wanna cook them up. Um, you know, fried green tomatoes are really good, but I've been also making, um, you know, green and red tomato ketchup, which is really delicious. So you can use them. Don't throw them away. <laughs> On this netting, we've grown several panels of beans, um, mostly drying beans. Yeah, I would say that it wasn't like a thriving success. There is a good yield, but it's not, you know, an excellent yield. And something that I've heard from some of my teachers, gardening teachers, and from uh, Dan Jason over on Salt Spring, Salt Spring Seeds, he has said that if you grow beans in the same place year after year, you will increase your yields. So I'd like to try that next year to grow beans in the same space and see if that helps. Um, you know, it might be some kind of uh, nitrogen. You need to build up the nitrogen in the soil to help the beans. Um, yeah, but they're still, you know, awesome, beautiful. We have lots for seed for next year, as well as for eating in the winter. So our trombocinos are still growing and still producing new baby uh, trombocinos here. There's a little one coming here. Uh, and they're still tender and the vines are over my head now growing vertically here. Um, and so this is such a cool plant, we've talked about it lots, but um, just the more the season goes on, the more I'm really so impressed by this plant. You can eat the small, um, you know, the young uh, squash as just like a zucchini, it's really firm. Um, or you can let them kind of cure on the vine here. And so this is uh, what's going on here, um, you know, this three and a half foot trombocino has just been growing here and is turning a paler color and now you can see that it's starting to cure um, and so I'm gonna cut one right now and we'll finish the curing in our house <laughs> there you go you can see how beautiful and what a showstopper that is. Put it on the centerpiece of your Thanksgiving table and um, you know, impress your family over Zoom. <laughs> so here we have planted Titan sunflowers and they have really lived up to their name. They're getting really big and the, you know, when they, the heads get so big, they start to curl over. So we have a, some of them that are starting to do that, they're curling right over. And with sunflowers, you wanna uh, make sure that they're starting to, the, um, the seed itself is starting to turn a little bit before you harvest it. It will ripen inside. You wanna make sure that it's not in a moist environment at all because you're kind of working against mold versus curing. Um, and so, yeah, you can dry these out and then eat sunflower seeds all winter. <laughs> <laughs>